Hi, I'm Greta. And I'm Scott. And we're the board game couple, turning game night into date night. So, grab your hazmat suit. Because as of right now, you work for the CDC. In today's game, Pandemic. In Pandemic, you and the other players work together in order to try and treat and eventually cure four different diseases that are threatening to spread worldwide and create a global pandemic. Way to use the game's title in your description. Name drop! So, to play, you get to choose one of a variety of characters. One of the cool things about Pandemic is that the characters are so diverse. There's a bunch of different races, a bunch of different genders just makes the game kind of that much more fun. But the other cool thing about the characters is that each one has a special power that helps you during the game. Maybe you can treat diseases easier, maybe you can move easier. It all depends. And you find as you play that you will tend to favor one of the characters over another. You'll also realize you kind of wish you could play with them all, right? Because more players equals more powers equals easier game. The more players you have, mm, the same level of challenging the game is. It's one of those awesome games that scales up and scales down depending on the number of players. So don't be fooled. Two players, four players, doesn't matter. This is still a challenging game. During your turn, you'll have four different actions to do different things. You can move around the globe, treat diseases, or if you've managed to accumulate the resources through the player cards, actually cure the disease. Once you've done that, you're one step closer to curing, to saving the world and getting your due reward. So, cubes of each disease can appear on the game at any time and anywhere. You have to be ready to change your strategy at a moment's notice. The way it works is you pull from something called an infection deck. Whichever one of these you choose, that color disease cube will appear on the board in that city. You could be over in Asia and something could appear in America and you have to figure out how to get there. It's kind of hard. And just when you start to think you've figured out that magical plan that will get you there, the game will inevitably throw a curveball at you. These curveballs are something called outbreaks. What this means is that more than three of any one color disease has appeared in that city. And it causes mass panic and rioting and the cube spread to all the nearby cities. And it's just not a good thing. The other thing that can happen while you're playing, there's another deck called the player deck. And it usually gives you awesome things that helps you as you play. But every once in a while, one of these comes up. <clears throat> An epidemic card. These are not good. These almost certainly cause an outbreak. Sure, sometimes you can catch it in time if you're lucky and have to happen to be in that area of the globe. But if we're being honest, usually you're not. So uh, with that in mind, what, what do you think of the game overall? Well, I'm actually a really big fan of Pandemic. I really like, first off, that it's co-op. Surprise, surprise. But secondly, just how many things you have to think of while you're playing. It's kind of a strategy-based game, but at the same time, you have to be willing to let your strategy go at a moment's notice and just try and figure out something new. There's just so many different things to worry about, and the world is just so large, it's really hard to get from one area to the other. I will say, though, I kind of think this game causes fights. I feel like when we played it together or when we played it with big groups, just because there's so many different options and there's so many different opinions, you can sort of start to fight about what you think is the best thing to do. So with that in mind, I kind of say make sure you pick your teammates wisely. Yeah, I think that it's an interesting game. I have definitely enjoyed I have this as a, uh, it's available as an app, uh, and I've enjoyed playing it on my tablet uh, as much as I enjoyed playing it live and in person with other people. It's the type of thing where, yeah, things get out of control pretty easily, and you're going to have to change your ideas on the fly. Um, I do agree that there are much different there are much different strategies and much different ways to go about winning, which is very cool. But when you do wind up getting conflicting ideologies, you're uh, you're in for a rough ride. Whereas everybody thinks they have a better way to help save the world. Um, it is a cool game. 
I definitely enjoy it. I like playing it, but uh, it can it can get you rough, and you find out who your friends really are after this game. So one of the other really cool things about this game, I guess it's kind of a different game, but not really. There's something called Pandemic Legacy. Pandemic Legacy uses legacy rules of a legacy system where choices that you make at the beginning or the first game, the first time you play it, will have lasting effects that go all the way to the end of the last game when you play it. Uh, it has a set kind of campaign, an ongoing story. That ongoing story unfolds, but the choices you've made, if you have a, a disease that has run rampant in the city, that city will start to riot and eventually collapse, making it harder to get in and out of and really help the people that are there. Likewise, if you eradicate a disease during your turn or during the game, then that disease is easier to deal with later on. It's really cool to have something that has lasting effects and you get to really have a say in how the game plays out in a long-term way. Let's put it this way. If you're already a fan of Pandemic, absolutely go pick up Pandemic Legacy. You will not regret it. If you've never played Pandemic and maybe we've piqued your interest a little bit, don't start with Pandemic Legacy. Work out the kinks on the Pandemic, learn how to play, figure out your strategy, but then definitely consider moving on to Pandemic. And Pandemic is such a, a, a well-known game at this point. It's one of those where things get compared to it. It's the, this is the Pandemic that's firefighters. Or I think we even mentioned in our Dead Men Tell No Tales that it was a lot like Pandemic with a lot of things happening. So there, it's a cool game. It's a standard game. It's a game that most people are probably familiar with. And it's that way because it's so freaking good. So, Scott. Date night or fighting? Um, well, I think that this game has actually moved to the back of our list of play, playing games when we get uh, when we get together and we play stuff. Um, so I actually think I would call this a fight night game because we do conflict uh, usually in ideologies. Uh, I think that we sometimes come away from it a little sore, even if we've been succeeding. Um, and I think that there are a lot of games that I enjoy playing with you better, so I'm going to go fight night on this one. I kind of agree, which makes me sad because I really love this game like a lot, and we just finished our Pandemic Legacy campaign, and I loved it a lot. But to be perfectly honest, we fought a lot while we played it. We fight a lot if you play two-player. We fought a lot in our four-player Pandemic Legacy campaign. It definitely brings out you're panicked, and you have to make a decision at the last second, and it brings out those nerves and that tension. So... Unfortunately, it gets a fight night for me, too. If you're looking for something really cool and fun and interesting, maybe this is the game for you. But if you're looking for something where you're going to agree and just have a marvelous time and feel like you saved the world together, this is probably not your game. It's probably going to go really well if you have a bunch of people who think like you do. But uh, I think that a lot of fun in games is working with people who don't think the same way you do. I think that, that creates better encounters. And so... Uh, if you're just looking for a group who thinks exactly the way you do, just go play a solitary game. It's true. Don't let us scare you away. This is an awesome game. And part of the fun is disagreeing with people and really learning how they think and the other strategies out there. But when you're playing with just two people and you need to go sleep next to each other after you play, maybe not Pandemic. If you liked this video, please make sure to click like. And if you want to see more, make sure you click subscribe so that next time you can see us talk about... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs>